CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Here at the Georgia Dome, 20 minutes are in the books of our first semifinal of the evening. Our score at halftime, Oklahoma 34 and Indiana 30. Welcome to Singular at the half, everyone. Check out these numbers. Tom Coverdale for Indiana, 15 minutes on the score on the floor, zero points. Hollis Price, one point on the night. Qantas White, no points, one assist. I'm joined by Clark Kellogg as usual. Strange things happening here in the first half. Well, when you look at the backcourt scoring, neither team has gotten it from their backcourt like they expect to, but that means means the guys inside have been doing a lot of the work, Greg. You take a look at some key stats. Oklahoma, an excellent free throw shooting team. The best three free throw shooting team remaining in the field made 11 of 13. Turnovers, not a problem for either team. Not much happening behind the three-point line. But the work was done inside, especially for the Hoosiers. Jared Aldo inside with the layup there, two of his 11. Then Jeffrey Newton came in and gave the Hoosiers a big lift after Jared Jeffries went to the bench with foul trouble. He scored six. For Oklahoma, it was Aaron McGee, 14 points and seven boards. And look at him do work on that weak side glass. And he made a tough shot here over the good defense of Jared Jeffries. Nice quick release and a feathery touch. And then watch him carve out space in the low post right against the shot blocking Newton. So basically most of the scoring damage done inside by both teams. We remember Indiana raining those threes down on Kent State. There were 15 out of 19. Oklahoma's not letting them do that tonight. Indiana just two out of seven so far from behind the three-point line. This reminder for official NCAA Final Four merchandise, just click on shop at cbs.sportsline.com. America Online users enter the keyword CBS Sportsline. Well, it is springtime. That can mean we thank you for watching Singular at the half. Will the Hoosiers or the Sooners vie for the national title on Monday night? In 20 minutes, we'll have the answer. Jim and Billy are back with the second half right after this. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. CBA Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Semifinals is sponsored by Mountain Dew, Midas, Microsoft, and by Mercedes-Benz. What did you see with that Microsoft Agile move of the first half? Well, what we did see is a young man that came in the game, George Leach, played only six minutes, two points, two blocks, one rebound. Here he is moving without the ball beautifully. Tom Coverdell gets him the ball. Leach stuffs it. I think that it surprised Oklahoma to see him come in so aggressively off that bench. What do you expect we're going to see in the second half out of the two stars who were really shut down in the first half? Jeffries for Indiana and Price for Oklahoma. Well, obviously, Jeffries is going to get back in this game, but he's going to have to become much more effective in the low box. All right, Armin Katan, what do you have? Well, I'm talking to Mike Davis, lamenting the fact a lot of second half, second chance points for Oklahoma here, but he said Coverdale, Jeffries, and Fife have to step up. Only three points in the first half, and he said Jared Jeffries. He said we need 20 points out of him, and it's interesting, Jim. The last words out of Mike Davis's mouth to me was, "That's a really good basketball team." So he knows what he's up against. Obviously, back to you. Thank you, Jeffries, with only nine minutes of action in the first half, three points all at the line, and then to the bench with two fouls. Well, Jim, Indiana, the hottest shooting team coming in this tournament. There it goes down to McGee again. A good job. I'm surprised that Jeffries is still playing him one-on-one. -on -one. Look at Coverdale calls the timeout. Smart move by Coverdale, but I don't think that Indiana can keep Jeffries on McGee. Hoosiers timeout. We'll be right back. Side may change, but the soul remains the same. From oil changes to brakes to tune-ups, customers feel confident knowing Midas Total Car Care has their car running in top shape. She's running great. Let's jump the bridge. But where do you go? 
we've been enjoying these pictures from the Pontiac Vibe Skycam. Indiana ball here in the opening seconds of the second half. Jim, one of the things that you have to look at, Brown has only taken 120 shots in a year. And on the other on the other side of that equation, McGee has taken 428. You know that Jeffries playing Brown has got a much better chance to stay in this game. Here he is on the offensive end. He has to be really careful about a charge. Jeffries hits his first field goal of the game. And let's see that matchup again. It's Odell on Brown. And if you're Calvin Sampson, you want to see this ball going into McGee as much as possible. Traveling. Jabari Brown says, wait a minute. First player ever from the Virgin Islands to play in a Final Four from St. Thomas. A rather circuitous route to get to Oklahoma for Mr. Brown, Jim. Florida International as a freshman. Miami for a, the, the end of his high school run. That's right. Playing for Cyril Benjamin down at Charlotte Amali. Here's Jeffries, three points. Oh! Oh! And, home. and that puts Indiana up by one. That is an omen. Indiana is 16 and one when Jeffries makes a three-point shot. Even one that banks <laughs> in. <laughs> well, what did Davis want 20? He's already got five quick ones in the first minute. But here's a problem. And right over Jeffries. No foul, though. And still, no move by Indiana to get him off McGee. And I guarantee Oklahoma's going to go down there and test him on that. And here we see again the matchup zone by Oklahoma. They showed it in the first half, and they're going with it right now. Coverdale, open three. Good luck. And it's good for the two point lead. So the guys that Davis said had to get on track, Coverdale and Jeffries have done so. Oh, nice rebound by Brown. Took it right out of the arms of Fife. Great timing. Jeffries clears for the Hoosiers. Good open look. You give a raw many of those, and he's going to make them. Jeffries on the drive, and McGee on the reach in. There's showing the versatility of Jeffries. Je steps outside, can put the ball on the floor. Much as we'll see Drew Gooden in the second game, two of the most versatile big men in college basketball. Well, he draws the second on McGee, and just as you think. There are advantages for Oklahoma in that matchup at the other end. I think Jeffries feels like he can really take McGee outside. And oh, try to and that's a in. third. That's a third foul. What happened? Fife running right in to try to make the cut. McGee puts him on his back. This is a huge break for Indiana. And Fife, a former high school quarterback, gets clotheslined here. You'll see it right here. Pow, right in the neck. Fight from a family that's got some Final Four experience. His brother Dugan played it with that Fab Five team. He didn't get into the Final Four, but he was on the squad. And his father coached at Michigan in 76 when they played against none other than Indiana in the Final Four. So the third on McGee, who stays in there. And that ball kicked out, belongs to Oklahoma. Thursday on CBS, the investigators of CSI will look through the eyes of a peeping Tom turned killer. You won't believe what they see. Don't miss TV's most watched show, an all new CSI crime scene investigation. Thursday on CBS. Yeah, we've got foul problems for two of the key players in this game Jeffries and McGee. Dietrich loses the handle. And Indiana comes out with it. Coverdale. Coverdale puts it up. And long rebound out to Dietrich. Indiana has not done a good job when they have the numbers on the break tonight, Jim. That's about the third time they came down with a chance to make an easy play. It made it difficult. Again, McGee on and Jeffries. No doubling down. And a whistle. Oh, and with there the it leg, is. That's going to be number three on Jeffries. I really do not understand this matchup for Indiana. They can switch Odell over and allow Jeffries to guard a guy that's not going to touch this ball. Mike Davis has got to make the change. And it's not going to be made here on this inbounds pass. Your Oklahoma go right back to McGee again. McGee, a jumper outside, bangs it home for a two. They clarify a tying two at 38. And what also this does for Jeffries to be in this kind of foul trouble and see Oklahoma play in his zone, McGee doesn't have as big a challenge. 
but Jeffrey's ability to use that pump fake and drive, he has to worry about a charge on the offensive end. Odo, baseliner. All Oklahoma underneath for that one. Thomas Price still trying to get his game started. Well, you know what, Jim? I really loved what Calvin Sampson said. Price is the leader on this team. He has not forced any bad shots. Selby off the back of the rim. Oklahoma one out of nine from three, Billy. Good Bounce pass. pass inside, stripped away, and Ara comes out. That's sooner. Price's second huge steal in this game. Beautiful pass. And Horns be forced it at the other end. That was Dietrich's fault by not cutting through to take Hornsby out of the way. Quick passing sets up open three. Fight for three. Coverdale did the smart thing there. As soon as he caught the ball, he was ready to make the pass. His first points of the game. McGee fade away. Boy, he has that shot down. He really does. And of course, Jeffrey's really handicapped here, having to guard him. 20 points for McGee and all of the Sooner points in the second half. Half their total for the game. Jeffrey's outside. If you're Calvin Sampson, that's where you'd like Jeffries to be taking some shots. Price, that shot way off the mark. Got a feel that it was hit on the arm a little bit. Fife said no. I saw him shaking his head, but his last touched by Dietrich. Indiana's hit three out of three from behind the arc in this half to take the lead by one. And he points in the paint. Oklahoma, the only of the four to win its conference tournament. Oklahoma winning the Big 12 championship. Duke last year was the only team at the Final Four to win a conference tournament, won the title. The year before that, Michigan State was the only conference tournament winner, won the title. Well, that West region, Jim, had 10 of the 16 teams were conference tournament champions, so Oklahoma certainly was well-versed out there. And here they go back again. Let's check the defensive assignments right now. Newton into the game. They're playing that zone defense. Matching up is Oklahoma. And Moye returns also, Billy. I think that's a good move right there. Moye and Newton, the most athletic players that Indiana can put on the floor. Newton short on the jumper. Loose ball. Newton battling. And it's McGee looking for help. He is able to squeeze it over. Brown wants the lob. And Brown lays it in for the lead. Brown runs the floor very, very well for a man his size. Six foot ten. He can get out there and go. Now watch this defense right now that Oklahoma is using. It helps McGee. It's a 1-2-2, two, two, but it's a matchup zone. McGee will not have to go out on Newton that far away from the basket. So basically, you've got two guys in the paint defensively. Five jumper off the mark. Ara on the run. Gets the roll. He has such a great release on his shot. Ebi Ara, the Big 12 newcomer of the year with 13. Scored 52 points in the National Junior College Tournament. Should say enough as to whether a guy can score. That's a great place where we've seen talent for many years. How great about block that? by Dietrich. They say it's off Indiana. Dietrich knocked it out of Jeffrey's hands, and it was off Jeffrey's knee. Terrific shot block technique to get the ball on the way up. Now watch Dietrich right here. Goes down, gets all ball, and then for the second time in this half, the ball goes off Jeffrey's foot. Darian Selvi, McGee with a chance to get a breather. Steal some minutes, too, with the three fouls. Hollis Price says Selvi's the best sixth man in college basketball. He hadn't had much of a game so far tonight. White, that's a two-pointer. Solid defense by Coverdale, right, right in White's face. Hey, we've got some good sixth men right here at the Final Four. Langford for Kansas, Nicholas for Maryland. These subs also Moye. for, for <laughs> Indiana, Moye, Newton. Hoosiers had it up to a three-point lead. They've given up the last six. Moye, there he is. He ties it at 44. And in this defense, unlike the man-to-man -man that Oklahoma plays, Indiana's getting a lot of good looks, Jim, from the perimeter game. And they're shooting outstanding threes again, six of 11 in this one. Just as I was surprised at that matchup that... 
Indiana had with Jeffries playing against McGee. Selvey missing, and Jeffries chases it oh, down. Nice Nifty move. move to shake free from Ara. He has Fife on a wing. He'll go inside the Newton. And it's a foul on Dietrich. Boy, I give Jeffrey some credit here. He makes the steal and then that excellent dribbling move. Monday on CBS when Baby Bob Speaks, America Listens. Catch the smash hit comedy that everybody's talking about. All new Baby Bob. Monday, uh, special. Everybody loves Raymond as well on CBS. Jimmy, don't see many six foot ten players that can put the ball on the floor with that unusual dribble as Jeffries did there. He's got Selby on him. Indiana can go inside over the top to Jeffries. There he, he is. Him in and Dietrich was able to reach around and get a fingertip to knock it away. Jimmy, you, don't the steal. Wanna, you don't want to throw the ball. Oh, how about that? And blocked out of there. Hoosiers with the numbers. Jeffries is running. Here comes the lob. Jeffries never had a full control of it. Price. Oh. And swatted away by Newton. Coverdale has numbers if he can find them. He finds it. It's Moye. He'll challenge Ara and the foul on Oklahoma's Ara. Some sequence oh. right here. Up and down the Get court. It. Newton doing a terrific job on one end. He has all ball, pulls it down from Dietrich. That's the second foul on a Rob. 44-44. Moye foul by a Rob. Well, this is not the way to use your head, but we talk about a no. young man that has given a big lift, and you can see Calvin Sampson, he's talking to his team, start using your head a little bit more. Those were some bad decisions on the break by Oklahoma when they had a chance really to build on the lead. Oklahoma's missed its last six, and three of those have been blocked. Some major coaching decisions to be made in this game, and primarily, Jim, on the defensive end. How do you protect Jeffries? When do you put McGee back in the game? In Oklahoma, are you going to stay in more zone than man-to-man? -man? Newton down low, size advantage, and he makes it over Selvey. Oklahoma playing an awful lot of zone against a team that really matches up against them in a zone defense better than they do man-to-man. -man. Blake Johnston is in the game for the first time for the Sooners, number 12. He can fire it from the outside. And here comes McGee, Bill. You were wondering how long he would sit. Seconds later, he returns. As I said before, they can protect McGee in those zone defenses, but when they play the zone, Indiana, as we can see, has had a much better time getting open shot looks. He was out for about six minutes. Jeffries oh. almost landed on him, and he muscles his way to a tying 46. Terrific job by McGee on the inside. He has 22 for the Sooners. That's his 13th 20-point game on the year. Donald Perry back on the floor. Coverdale looked very tired before that last timeout. Brown on Newton, who has just eaten him alive. Beautiful move, Jeffrey Newton. And Brown can't worry about picking up another foul. He's got to be aggressive in there. Newton's having a terrific postseason, Jim. And starring here at home his hometown of Atlanta nice move by Mike Davis to take Jeffries off the key Brown tips it in Jabari Brown and again Newton is not blocked uh, Newton doing a good job blocking out McGee but Jeffries did not on Brown Perry had his hands full as a freshman in that first half Oklahoma not taking advantage of his shaky ball handling here in the second Newton, and he has McGee behind him this time. Kick out, freshman Perry, three. Yes! He's three out of four in the tournament from three after three out of 26. And Jim, how about the season? Newton. How about Newton? The spot him? He really did. He spot him on the opposite side. Perry had the presence of mind to stay over there and hold his ground. Much better when he doesn't have to handle the ball. His shooting for... Indiana from three is uh, taking on Kent State proportions in the second <laughs> half. They've hit all six in this half. Johnston drives easily for the basket. Jeff Jeffries didn't want to take a chance at going to help out. Six for six in the half from three after hitting their first eight in that regional final against the Golden Flashes. 
Well, it was only 15 out of 19 in that game, Jim, yeah. so it was kind of interesting to hear Hollis Price say, we can't make 15 out of 19 in practice with nobody guarding us. <laughs> That's right, warm-ups. Well, they've got the change now. Jeffries on Brown yep. and Newton on McGee. Good adjustment, even if Brown picks up a cheap one. You just don't want to have to guard McGee with Jeffries. Nice fake. Well, Jeffries read it, though. Another time, Jeffries with his dribble. Over to Moye, and Indiana leads by three at the 8.40 mark. Two brilliant plays by Jeffries on the steal, and then the dribble to actually lead the break as a 6'10 man. White. And a push-off called against... Indiana before the shot. There haven't been many college players that can do this at this size. Terrific dribbling, gets his composure, realizes he has Moye on the wing, makes the excellent pass in the perfect spot. Moye, as we talked about, extremely powerful, athletic enough to go up against Bryce and score. Moye commits the foul at the other end. He's he's uh, hurt a little bit here, Jim. Yeah, and. Uh... Not making it all the way to the bench quite yet. It looks like he's holding his cap. Second yep. foul on Moye, but out uh, for the moment. Needing some attention from the trainers. If you're Hollis Price, you have got to figure out how to start looking for some more shots. McGee, that would have tied it. Tipped out to five. Three-point lead and the ball. Jim Price, too much of an offensive threat to be this quiet for this long. Another foul on McGee. That's his fourth Mo Monday on CBS catch an all new late show with David Letterman. That's Monday on the Emmy Award winning late show with Dave Calvin Sampson beside himself. He has to put McGee down on the bench. The zone defense didn't even save him. Zindre comes in for McGee. McGee with four. And they stay in the matchup. Fife looking to get himself open or Hornsby away from the zone. They've had some good looks against this matchup. Coverdale needs help. Reset at 15 on the shot clock. Fife Zindre out there. Hornsby stuck for a moment. Newton takes it. Are you kidding me? It's the two-point shot. Got a foot on the line. They don't expect Newton to contribute uh, from that far. I out. wouldn't think so. He was one for two from three on the year. The Indiana bench, that includes Newton, has outscored the Sooner bench 27 to 8. The Cinderella Hoosiers have the five-point lead with 7.20 remaining. Coming out of an Oklahoma timeout and a live shot from Assembly Hall back on campus at Bloomington. It is packed. It is raucous. And, and they're counting down the time here with 7.20 to go. Can the Hoosiers do it? And it's the Mike Davis era in Assembly Hall. Man to man the entire game by Indiana. And here's the guy I think has to get moving for Oklahoma, Hollis Price. Still has not hit from the field the whole game. Selby shot, swatted away by Newton. Selby steps, steps. And Jim, I don't want to downplay at all the fact that Price is being guarded by the co Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year in fight. We'll be right back. Armin Katayan back here at the Final Four where A.J. Moya has just left the court, headed towards the locker room. Jim, they've been working on his, his right hamstring, the back of that leg, for the last few minutes. I'm told he may, may come back into this game. Back yeah. to you. Thank you, Armin. And you would think they would need him down the stretch. Odell's back in the lineup for Indiana. And here he is inside. He got pinned underneath. Zindre. And a foul's called on Odell. 
That was a rather easy basket, but set up again by Newton on a terrific pass. He is putting the ball on the floor, hitting from outside, blocking shots. I don't know if I've ever seen, Jim, a guy come off the bench and have this kind of production that was totally unexpected. I mean, he's had a good postseason, but he is playing an outstanding game tonight. And Jeffries returns. He's had a good rest, three fouls. And Odell heads out with two fouls. If you're Kelvin Sampson, two things you got to get done. You got to get Hollis Price in a position to start scoring, and you've got to wait for about one more minute and then bring McGee back into the game. Can you imagine Price is 0 for 6 from the field, and Oklahoma facing its biggest second half deficit of the tournament? Right on cue, he fires it down and out. And Coverdale with the quick hands Indiana, comes out with it. Indiana getting all the loose balls, Jim. Indiana with its biggest lead of the game. Coverdale finds Newton for the seven-point lead. Coverdale really limping right now. But he's going to, and here comes McGee and Brown in the game. It's time for Calvin Sampson to say, I can't worry about fouls whatsoever. A 9-2 run for the Hoosiers. Under six to play. What Fife has been able to do is to keep Price right in front of him this entire game. Price wanted it. Now he'll take it. Three-point shot at last. Good job by Price getting himself loose in traffic. He's got to become much more aggressive. And that team now only two of 13 from three for the game. And I'm expecting Oklahoma, Jim, to pick up their defensive pressure a little bit farther. Out. Oh, to leave the three-point performance at the other end. Hornsby with one. Good screening. And Indiana in the second half from three is the big story here. That wasn't even that good a look for Hornsby and still made it. Price fouled by five. Boy, Fife is tired. Look at out there how hard he's been working against a real good offensive performer. They've hit their six attempts in this half. This is the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. You can get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online under the keyword CBS Sportsline. It's actually for Indiana seven straight when you take in Odell's shot at the closing seconds of the first half. Seven straight threes. McGee and Brown get back into the lineup. Fife for the second time. Well, he takes took, one on the chin. Remember the last one, though, was a foul on the Oklahoma man, McGee. That one he had all already fouled. Price, who goes to the line as a 85% free throw shooter. Every team has a heartbeat, says Kelvin Sampson, and Havas is ours. I think that Oklahoma's going to start picking up a little bit stronger. This is what I thought they'd do in the first half. Pick up full court. Make... Coverdale really have to work. Under five to play. Five-point lead for Indiana. Defense is really extended. That ought to give Jeffries a chance if they pull him out to be able to get something down in low. Newton full of confidence over McGee. Not this hold on. Wow. That's going to be it for McGee. They say he got him on the elbow. He better be careful. He doesn't want to be too demonstrative here. But a great job by Newton, who is having the game of his life. He goes up on the elbow. You can see it was actually elbow to elbow created the foul, not the hands. McGee will have to sit. He had four fouls. Remember the foul trouble against Missouri, but was able to dodge that. He had five fouls and fouled out in the win in the Big 12 championship against Kansas. His team was able to pull it out 64-55. But believe me, Oklahoma would love to have him on the floor with the remaining four minutes and 40 seconds of this game. He has been their offense today, and he's a senior, and he must hope that his teammates can rally here to extend his career. I look for two things right now, Jim. Because McGee is on the floor, and you can see Price talking to Ara down there in white, the perimeter game is going to have to come alive for Oklahoma to get back in this. Long rebound to Hornsby. Newton misses them both, and Indiana gets the bounce. Coverdale never should have taken it down in the deep corner. He got yeah. stuck and threw it out of bounds. Yep. He got caught down there with no passing angle, had plenty of time on the clock because they had a new 35. So Aaron McGee 
All Big 12 performer who has starred in this tournament gave him 22 points, nine rebounds a game in the tournament, and hit that number today right on at 22. He's out. And Brown on the way up, Hornsby. Good foul, though, by Hornsby. Brown had an easy dunk. And Jim, one of the real subtle moves, and we talked about this as this game was moving on. When Indiana switched Jeffries over so that he didn't have that responsibility on McGee anymore, Jeffries stays on the floor with three fouls. McGee, over aggressive defensively, even in the zone, goes out with five. Jabari Brown, only 50% free throw shooter with two. And you can see why. Not a good release on that shot. Poor rotation. And now Oklahoma, if they're going to do it, is going to have to do it with full court pressure defense. Moyer probably not able to come back. Doesn't look that way down the other end. He's come back to the bench, though. They had taken him to the locker room for a moment. Here comes the full court pressure. Nobody helping out White. That was never seen by the officials. Fife did a great job. Coverdale throws it away. White really upset with his former high school teammate Price. Nobody talking whatsoever on that screen, and White gets killed right here. How is that not a call? On what? On White. Well, you can have contact Did you gain an advantage. Inside, Ara bangs it home, and it's down to two at the four-minute mark. And again, picking up full court, making things very difficult for Indiana. If Oklahoma looks back on this game, they've got to feel that they should have done more of this early in the first half. White on the push off. By dropping back, Jim, inside the top of the key with those matchup zones, they did not put that typical Oklahoma pressure on Indiana. It gave Indiana confidence to look for the threes. It'll be a one and one for Tom Coverdale. The story all week leading into this, even as teammate Dane Five tried to help him out gave him a book about Bear Bryant how to play through pain and he has played most of the way but that's a big miss on the front end and Indiana's only six out of 12 in this game from the line kind of amazing shooting better when they have somebody guarding them yeah. shooting better from three than free right two to tie three for the lead white got stuck Selvi. Puts it up and in. Almost like a rebound to himself. Smart play by Selvi. Timeout, Indiana. A seven point lead has been recovered by Oklahoma. Timeout, Hoosiers. With Armand Katan and Bonnie Bernstein, Jim Nance, and Billy Packer back here at the Georgia Dome. The arrow belongs to Indiana, but the Hoosiers with one timeout. That's all, Billy. Well, they have one timeout, but you can see Oklahoma picking up much farther out now. That means that there should be some space for Jeffries to get the ball. They have to figure out a way to get him the ball in the low post. He and Newton been a good high-low post combination. Here he is. Coverdale and Price very active on him. And they're going to call a foul on Coverdale for pushing off. Selvi and Price so quick. Coverdale having some problems on that ankle now, Jim. He's, Very obvious. He's turned it over a couple of trips. Yep. Thrown it away and here commits the foul. Coverdale's going to have to sit down. It seems like that ankle tightening up on him, but good defensive pressure by Oklahoma. And here's a great example of where they miss Moye. Donald Perry comes back in. Mark Coverdale, father watching from Noblesville, Indiana. Jim, that front end of the one on one that he missed before was a very critical free throw, particularly with his great free throw shooting team that Oklahoma has. Selvi on a one and one. Unable Both to teams. convert. Yep. Last seven points to the Sooners to tie it at 60. Oh, good lob. Bob gets it to Newton and he's able to hit it inside. Now that's what is going to be available if they're going to put that pressure on the perimeter. Indiana has done a fine job today recognizing what the defense is giving him and taking advantage of it. Price trying to play without the ball. On a swipe. Goes back out. Ura lost it for a moment. 12 on the shot clock. Spinning on Hornsby. 
on the run. Hoosiers box out, and it's Perry underneath. You're exactly right, Jim. Great blocks out, blocks out situation. Perry gets right past. Oh, no. The Sooners collided. What happened? Newton actually created a screen on two Oklahoma players. Good recognition by Perry. Under two minutes to play. The last four to Indiana. White stuck baseline. Price open three. Oh, that spins out. Mr. Newton, it was his law in this game. He is really playing well. You don't defy the Newton law, especially in his hometown. He has come back. There is that double screen. Yeah, look at that. Look at Jeffries. He actually was getting fouled, but he sets a double screen, and Perry recognized it and went right in for the layup. Newton back to the line. Now he missed his last two attempts. So be a one and one. And a solid free throw shooter, though. 74%. Solid on that one. 17 points. He has tied his career high. And we talked to the team this week. They would all tell you that he ended up with the ball in his hands at the end of that Duke game. And that that symbolically meant a lot to Newton. And you can see his confidence soaring. He's got 12 in the second half. Hoosiers lead by six. A stunning Indiana performance to this point. The last six to the Hoosiers with 1.45 to play. The Oklahoma backcourt, Billy, not only Price, but White off today as well. They're one of 14 combined from the field. Nine attempts for Price, one make, 0 for 5 for his former high school running mate, St. Augustine down in New Orleans. Despite that, I think that Hollis Price has got to want the ball now in this situation. Here he is. Driving on five to floater back of the rim. And Jeffries. it's Jeffries coming out with it. Indiana in no hurry. Hornsby looking for help. And a bump foul on Oklahoma. That's called on Selby. Pretty good job by Hornsby just to go ahead and tuck in that time to draw the foul. Price did what we expected, Jim. He took the ball, but it just wouldn't fall for him. Having one of those nights you want to forget. Dietrich back into the lineup for Kelvin Sampson. And White's out. One and one. That's the ninth team foul. It'll be double bonus rest of the way for the Hoosiers. Hornsby. Not shooting on the year. Great free throws, which is surprising because he is a pure shooter from three. Kid who grew up in a Stroke small town in Louisiana of a thousand people. And a coca. We watched the movie Hoosiers before every game. His senior year in high school, 43 times he watched it. No doubt he was going to play for the Hoosiers one day. Selvey with the putback. A minute and 11 left. And the Indiana margin is five. Timeout Sooners. Sixty-seven, sixty-two. Indiana, Mike Davis in his first full year as the head coach at Indiana. Not awarded that title until the end of last season after his team was knocked out first round by Kent State. They come back this year, meet again in a regional final, beat them, and now he's a minute, ten seconds away from going to the championship game. Ooh, great jump that time. Oh. Nice timing. And Jim, you know what was really unique about the naming of Mike as the head coach. The victory over Duke was exactly one year, the anniversary of the day he was named coach. So pretty good way to celebrate first year anniversary. Two shots for Donald Perry. I, you talk about anniversary dates. One thing that might have been in the cards for Indiana. Here we are on March 30th. On this day in 1940, Indiana won its first national championship. In 1987, Indiana beat Syracuse on the Keith Smart shot for the national championship. And let me not overlook, in 1981, Isaiah led him on this very day as well to a championship over North Carolina. Three championships on this day alone in Indiana history. Price down. Wild scramble. Newton had it for a moment. Arrow goes the other way. And there's, if there's not a foul here, they... Oklahoma gets a timeout, really didn't have good possession of the ball. Wow. Kind of surprising there. Didn't see that. 54 seconds left here at the Georgia Dome. 
Jim, that was a huge timeout call there for Oklahoma because the arrow is pointing in favor of Indiana. Ball a scramble on the floor. Indiana never could get it in a tie-up situation. Indiana's bench has outscored its starters 37 to 32 and a 25 point advantage over the Sooner bench out seven you've got to go ahead and score as soon as possible by Hornsby again Hollis Price not looking there's a foul by Price not looking to create his own score I realize he's not having a good offensive game but he's got to put it on the floor and go to that basket and now you start to wonder as they are going wild at Assembly Hall back in Bloomington. What will Moye be able to deliver if Indiana finishes this thing off? What will Moye be like on Monday and Coverdale coming off of this with the ankle? Well, it's going to be hard to tell until we talk to the trainers in this regard, Jim, for Coverdale and Moye because uh, those kind of injuries, the kind of thing that can tighten up, and in one day you're just not ready to go. But on the other hand, Coverdale showed how he could come back from what was a very bad situation in that twisting of the ankle a week ago. But both of them are not going to see action the rest of this way. Short. Perry and it goes. hits the roll. Nine point lead for Indiana. Thinking three. Barad Misfire Newton. He has got to be our Chevy MVP. And then some. An incredible performance for the young man that comes back to Atlanta. And we talked about great sixth men, Jim. He was beyond the <laughs> sixth man tonight. Mike there with that scowl on his face. Boy, I'll never forget that reaction when Jason Williams <laughs> hit the three. And he turned around. And he went to the bench. <laughs> to his knees. Calvin Sampson. Team had a remarkable season considering the fact that he had to put together a group of junior college transfers to bring them to a Final Four. In such a short period of time, it's quite an accomplishment, but they did not play with that kind of aggressive defense we expected in this game tonight. And Billy, you thought they were jittery early. I really did. I didn't. I thought they were very tight offensively, and I didn't think aggressively on defense. They really went after Indiana. And then Calvin went to that zone a great deal, and Indiana took advantage of it. Well, I think, I think is this so, is all emotion. Yep, this is so, so much emotion. And, and you know, here's another thing. There's the smile. Bob Knight in his second year took Indiana to the Final Four just exactly the same. There's his boy who is everywhere. His son his Antoine. Floor. Antoine is three years old. He, he sat with me he yesterday. He owns the court. He, he just, sat with me yesterday at practice, and we had a television monitor there, and I said, what's your favorite TV show, Antoine? And he said, Mike Davis. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was mentioning it. Bob Knight brought his second team at Indiana to a Final Four, was beaten by UCLA. So he did not get to the final game. So Mike Davis, who had a better record in his first year than Knight did in his first year at Indiana, now tops him in this regard as well. Well, I'll say this. Bob Knight had a large hand on a lot of these kids coming to Indiana, and they, according to Indiana officials, have not heard from him on this run to the Final Four. Not a congratulatory call or anything, and I find that very regrettable. Here's Brown inside for the land. Too little, too late. And a steal back. Dietrich unable to give him one last breath. And Perry ends up with the ball in his hands. A team with a lot of heart is set for Monday night. The Hoosier hysteria will carry over to the championship game in Atlanta. Indiana has advanced to the championship game in its school history five times. And in those five championship appearances, they are 5-0. and oh. This will be their sixth appearance on Monday night. They will try to be the first number five seed to ever win the championship. Dane Fife just said to his coach, we've got one more for you. Put a big hug on him and heads to the sideline.
the Chevrolet players of the game Jeff Newton comes back to his home city of Atlanta and stars with 19 points a career high and four blocks and Aaron McGee who at one time had half the sooner total ends with 22 points fouling out on this one 22 and 8 right on his NCAA tournament averages yes N Davis and Goliath night and day at Indiana or is it night to Davis the Hoosiers are going to the Monday night championship game Welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia, everyone. Greg Gumbel with you from inside the Georgia Dome where the Indiana Hoosiers have just beaten Oklahoma by a score of 73 to 64. Want to remind you, coming up next, game two of our national semifinal doubleheader. It'll be Kansas against Maryland. The tip time is 8.52 Eastern time, and we get a look inside the Kansas Jayhawks locker room. Clark Kellogg, it is just as quiet as the locker rooms of the first two games. That's the way guys prepare now, Greg. They put on their headphones, they think about what their business is at hand, and they get ready to go out and try to get it accomplished. There are some unbelievable numbers that come off of this first game as you take a look at the Jayhawks preparing to come out to meet the Maryland Terrapins, but from that first game, consider this. Consider that Indiana shot six for six from behind the three-point line in the second half while Oklahoma shot one for 12. Well, that was one of the differences in the game, but I really thought Indiana's ability all game long to go inside, to attack in the paint, and make it easier to get some of those better looks outside in the second half. There are so many aspects of this game that are still to be covered, but we'll pause here for a moment and take you down onto the floor, and uh, Jim Nance and Billy Packer are with the winning team. All right, Greg, America loves a Cinderella, and we've got one set for Monday night. Mike Davis, everybody was saying around here that Oklahoma was going to have a big performance here. Did you hear all that talk? Did your team hear that? I definitely heard it, but God has shown me favor. I keep saying uh, he's blessing this team, he's blessing me. But not saying he's going to give us the victory, but he's, he, he put me here. He put me here for a reason. I just feel like every game we go into, we're going to win. How about the performance of Atlanta's very own Jeffrey Newton? Unbelievable. I took him out in the beginning of the game, and I uh, put him back in. I said, when you're ready to play, Jeff can make any plays. They coach him with you. And he played great. I mean, just to be able to come back home and play like this in front of his, his home crowd is unbelievable. And now you're playing for the title on Monday night. What was that like out there for you today, Jeff? Man, I can't even explain how I feel right now. Just good to be able to come home and, and perform in front of the home crowd and get the win. We've seen you many nights, have great nights in the low post, but your two big plays today with dribbling exhibition on the outside, what was that all about? I mean, I try to do what I can to help my team. Um, they were double teaming me on the post in front of me, Noodle breaking in the post, all I could do is how to rebound and push the ball and break and get good passes to open guys. Were you uh, surprised at Aaron McGee, the way he came after you right at the beginning of the ball game? I figured he would. I mean, he's a great player, got a great touch around the basket. Our goal is to get him in foul trouble, and that worked out because we didn't have number 40 on us. Hey, Coach, what's the early story on Moye for Monday night as well as Coverdale? Well, we couldn't hold Moye and Coverdale if we wanted to. Those guys would be ready. I thought I thought Donald Perry played great. Yeah, you know, he's good. a really big free throws for us. Everybody was down on him, but we knew he could do it. Indiana's been to the championship game now five times, five previous times in school history, and the Hoosiers have never lost in the title game. What do you expect Monday night? I've already claimed the championship. Oh, he's already changed on us. There you go. Good luck, guys. Nice Spectacular guys. performance. Game, Jeff, Jarrett, Coach Davis. Let's go back over to Greg. All right, Jim, everybody keeps talking about Indiana as a Cinderella, but Kelvin Sampson said, you know, Cinderella didn't beat Duke University. We're back to Atlanta right after this. The second of today's national semifinals is just minutes away. Kansas against Maryland. The tip time is 8.52 p.m. Eastern time here in Atlanta. Jayhawk junior forward Drew Gooden, the Big 12 player of the year, has averaged more than 16 points and 13 rebounds per tournament game. For the Terrapins, Juan Dixon leads the way. This season's ACC player of the year is Maryland's all-time leading scorer. He's posted at least 27 points in three of Maryland's four 2002 tournament outings. And now, an Enberg essay, presented by Pacific Life. 
Well, last year in Minneapolis, Dick Enberg, in his essay, paid a special tribute to the basketball seniors, kids who stayed with their collegiate program throughout their entire four years of eligibility. That tribute spawned a new national award, and Dick joins us now to announce the first ever winner. Dick. Thank you, Greg. And the athletes themselves wrote this essay, and the 120-year-old Kansas City Club, home to past presidents Eisenhower and Truman, has initiated the honor, naming the Senior Class Award. The inspiration for my essay a year ago was Shane Battier. He resisted all the obvious temptations to stay for a senior year, and he won All-America. He won National Player of the Year awards as well as Academic All-America of the Year and led Duke to the national championship. So Battier is uh, the honorary first winner. But here now, alphabetically, are the 10 finalists for the first ever Senior Class Award. Maurice Baker, Oklahoma. Of Oklahoma from the Georgia Dome. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome here in Atlanta where we await the start of the second of today's national semifinals, Kansas against Maryland in game number one. Indiana defeated Oklahoma by a score of 73-64 just a short while ago. Bonnie Bernstein had a chance to talk with Oklahoma coach Kelvin Sampson. Well, early in the game, Kelvin Sampson, I saw you talking to your team about not having enough discipline. Came out with a lot of fire, but so did Indiana. Well, discipline is a um, starts with decisions and judgment. There was a flurry of um, possessions there where we kept attacking the basket, and instead of attacking and kicking it out for open shots, we kept trying to shoot it over them. And, you know, with uh, Jeffries and um, uh, Newton, they've got good shot blockers. You know, and sometimes uh, today, in today's game, we didn't do a good enough job of sharing the ball and making each other better. Seems like we had to, we were taking some hard, harder shots than we should have been taking. That's a byproduct of sometimes not making, not using good judgment. When you look at foul trouble, Jabari Brown in early, Aaron McGee fouled out, and naturally you would have had to rely more on your backcourt from s f some scoring, particularly Hollis Price. Defensively, they, they did a pretty good job. I thought our guards did a pretty good job. We, we had to go zone there to protect our big guys from foul trouble. Um, but, you know, our, our post got stuck behind some time, and we didn't support. And, you know, our, our defense, uh, which has been great all year long, um, obviously wasn't as good today as it needed to be. And, you know, in a game like this, um, uh, you, you've just got to play better. We no excuses. I, Indiana played better than we did today, and, and um, you know, I wish them well. If I would have told you before the game that, of all people, Jeff Newton, was going to yeah. come out and score 19 points. I think it's safe to say you would have looked at me kind of funny. Well, he wasn't the uh, one that I would have guessed had 19 points, but you have to give him credit. You know, and th these games are opportunities for people to step up and um, um, create memories and make big plays. And Jeff Newton did. I thought our kids hung in there when it got when we got it to 60-60. I still thought we were going to win, but at that point on, uh, Indiana made the big plays. All right, well, Calvin, I appreciate your time. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. Classy man, the head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, Kelvin Sampson, and you heard him mention Indiana shot blockers. One of the amazing numbers from that first game, Clark, is that Indiana blocked eight shots to Oklahoma's one. And part of it was due to what Kelvin Sampson just said, his team attacking, not being as patient as, he, as they needed to be. But the other part of it was just excellent defense by Indiana. George Leach with the denial. George Leach again with the denial. Then inside, that's Leach again throwing it out of there. Quick off their feet, excellent timing. Newton stepping in, getting his hands on the ball. Dietrich trying to attack. Newton sends it away. Newton sends it away again. And as you look at these plays, most of those blocks were smaller guys taking it into the bigger Indiana guys. And then the three-point shooting in the second half, Greg. Indiana knocked down six three-pointers in the second half on six attempts. Donald Perry there, Kyle Hornsby here. And I think, again, being able to throw the ball inside and take advantage of their strength up front allowed Indiana to get some better three-point looks in that second half. And you talk about those three-pointers. Remember, Indiana shot just two out of seven in the first half, came out and shot six for six in the second half. We'll take a timeout. We'll continue from Atlanta in just a moment. The Jayhawks were concerned about guard Kirk Heinrich's condition after he injured his ankle in the first round, but he came back strong and has averaged nearly 11 points a game along the road to Atlanta. 
Maryland's Lonnie Baxter was named his region's most outstanding player for the second straight year. Among his accomplishments, 29 points and nine rebounds in the Terrapins' regional final victory over UConn. And we welcome you back to the Georgia Dome. All the bench players come up large for Indiana. Jeff Newton, Donald Perry, A.J. Moyje, George Lynch. In this game, it very well could be the same type of situation, although I think an X-Factor player could be Byron Mouton with his ability to defend and do all the little intangibles. Maryland has to do a good job in transition defense and on their defensive backboard because Kansas is a terrific offensive rebounding team. And it's generally considered when you have to go to the bench, Maryland usually has the edge there. What about the Kansas Jayhawks? Well, I think for Kansas, they've got to play their game. They want to play fast, but they want to play with poise while they're playing fast. When they've had problems, they've turned the ball over because they've tried to play too fast. If they keep it in rhythm, I think transition basketball is their key. All right. We haven't had enough excitement for one evening here in the Georgia Dome. We need more. Coming up, the top-seeded team out of the Midwest, the Kansas Jayhawks against the number one seed from the East, the Maryland Terrapins. The winners advance to Monday night's championship game against Indiana. Jim Nance and Billy Packer will have the call coming your way from the Georgia Dome right after this.